I'm Frank Schwach. I'm a computational biologist in the Plasma Gem team, which is part of the malaria program at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. I use computer programming to design DNA vectors that can manipulate genes in malaria parasites. A vector is a DNA molecule that we use to manipulate the genome of the parasite in a specific way. We can delete a gene, we can modify a gene to do something else, we can change the way it's being used by the parasite. When we knock out a gene, we don't just delete the gene, we need to replace it with something. We bring in a little package of DNA that conveys new function to the mutant cell. We call that a resistance marker. The resistance markers are guided into the right place in the malaria genome by short DNA sequences called oligonucleotides. The design software identifies the best oligonucleotides for each individual gene. Once the software has designed oligonucleotides, it will produce order sheets for them which will be sent to external companies to actually produce the oligonucleotides. Once we receive these custom-made oligonucleotides, the lab-based stage of the process begins. This has many steps and takes about two weeks. Firstly, the oligonucleotides are mixed with template DNA and a PCR reaction is performed. Now each well contains DNA fragments with the same resistance marker genes, known as a resistance cassette, but the ends of these fragments differ, and those will later guide the finished vector to the specific target gene in the parasite. These ends are the oligonucleotides we designed earlier. Next, a crucial step called recombineering happens in bacteria. Each of these bacterial cultures harbor a specific short piece of malaria DNA that contains an individual target gene identified at the design stage. The product of the earlier PCR reaction is then shot into these bacterial cells using an electroporation machine. Under specific culture conditions, the cells now perform the recombinering reaction which replaces a piece of malaria DNA with the resistance cassette. When exposed to antibiotics, due to the resistance marker, only the bacterial cells that have performed this reaction correctly will survive. We now need to replace the bacterial resistance genes for a new malaria-specific cassette that will allow us to eventually select for successful vectors in the malaria parasite. For this, we first extract the modified DNA, known as plasmids, from the selected bacteria. We then perform a so-called gateway reaction to swap one cassette for another. The modified plasmid is put back into bacteria using electroporation again and then plated up. Once the bacteria have grown on the plates, we pick the colonies and culture them overnight. As a first quality control step, we run another PCR reaction to confirm that the genomic fragment is correctly modified. We then run the products on a gel and record the results for our sample tracking database. Once we know the DNA modification has worked, the bacteria are stored in freezers. The bacteria now contain the final vectors that are ready to modify the genome of malaria parasites. We make these available to a worldwide community of scientists through our website and also use them for large-scale experiments of our own. Working at scale is very different from performing a few individual reactions in the lab, even at the relatively modest scale of the small malaria genome. Procedures need to be highly optimized and standardized and you need to think about tracking the process through the lab. Good communication between team members is very important. When you produce at scale, any mistakes made also quickly multiply and may cost a lot of time and money to rectify. I joined the project at an early stage when it wasn't a scaled up pipeline yet. It was great to see the progress from a few bespoke constructs to a sizable scale. We recently published an important piece of work that probes half of the genome for the role of genes and growth of the parasite in the blood. 
and it's great to see all that work culminating in a new scientific discovery.